Pokemon has been around for as long as I can remember, and we have been blessed with so many amazing main series Pokemon games and remakes. However though, when you look at every single Pokemon game side by side, which is the worst and which is the best? Well, in today's video, I'm going to be ranking every single Pokemon game from worst to best. But when I say every single game, I mean main series games, not any spin-offs or anything like that, because that's a whole different video in itself. But of course, this is all my own opinion at the end of the day, and it's completely cool if you guys disagree with what I have to say. And I'm pretty sure you guys are going to disagree with what I have to say. But anyway, don't hesitate though to drop a comment down below about the video and your ranking of the worst to best Pokemon games. Don't forget to leave a like on this video too to show your support and I'll be sure to bring out a new video very shortly. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already to keep up to date and follow my Twitter to updates about the channel. Both of those links can be found in the description down below. Now without further ado, let's get into the video and take a look at the worst to best Pokemon games. So starting things off as the worst Pokemon game in my opinion is actually one of the newest ones and it is Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon. Now I do have some evidence as to why I do believe this is one of the worst Pokemon games that we have and that is because Pokemon Ultra Sun and Pokemon Ultra Moon completely outclass this game in every single way. Also when Sun and Moon did come out the hype died down for it pretty quickly to be fair obviously we got it in November and then by like January February time it was already dead and like no one was really wanting to play the game. Yes, they were good games, but the cutscenes really destroyed the replayability and everything like that. Yes, it was an amazing game, and we did look forward to it when it was announced and everything like that, but when Ultra Sun and Moon came out, I haven't played Sun and Moon once since then, and I don't think many people have. It's just completely getting outclassed by this the newer version, so that is why I do believe Pokemon Sun and Moon is the worst game so far. Coming up next, we have Pokemon Black and Pokemon White. Now, these aren't necessarily bad games. They're only so far down on this list because it's the least game that I've played. I've played all of the regions so many times that 5th Gen, I really didn't play that well. I liked the region, but again, just with Sun and Moon, Pokemon Black 2 and Pokemon White 2 came out and again, just completely outclassed the Pokemon Black and White games, in my opinion. They were good games. They just had things that were outclassed by other games, such as the starters. I didn't really like the Gen 5 starters as much as, say, Gen 1 or Gen 2 or anything like that. And again, the storyline was okay. It was just very linear and everything like that. I don't know. I, it's just from my opinion, I think there were better Pokemon games. Coming up next, we have Pokemon Ruby and Pokemon Sapphire. Now, I'm pretty sure some of you guys are going to disagree with me on this. Well, I'm pretty sure you've already disagreed with me quite a lot already. But Pokemon Ruby and Pokemon Sapphire were good. Again, Emerald came out, though, and everyone just enjoyed Emerald more than Pokemon Ruby and Pokemon Sapphire. And also, the remakes came out as well, Pokemon Omega Ruby and Pokemon Alpha Sapphire, which is, again, something that a lot of people would kind of get drawn to instead of the actual Gen 3 games. They were good games. I enjoyed them. They, again, just got outclassed by a newer game that was released, such as Emerald and, you know, Auras as well. But yes, that is why Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire are pretty low down on the list. Coming up next, we have Pokemon Yellow. Now, Pokemon Yellow was a pretty good game in the way that it brought a lot of new things to the franchise that weren't in red and blue. So, obviously, we had Pokemon following you with Pikachu. We obviously had the ability to talk to your Pokemon. Obviously, when you span around and spoke to Pikachu, you obviously had all the starters being an actual option. Like, we caught them all as we got through the game. Um, the only problem was the fact that you had to be Pikachu and you couldn't evolve it or anything like that. I like the game. It's just I'll always like red and blue more just because they're a lot more nostalgic for me than yellow. Yellow is still nostalgic, don't get me wrong. It's just red was my first ever game. I enjoyed it a lot more than yellow just because I just because I wasn't kind of forced into having Pikachu. Obviously, you can take Pikachu out of your team and everything like that, which is fine. It's just that you can't actually get Raichu in that game apart from trading, everything like that. I don't know. I like the game. I just prefer red and blue more. Coming up next, we have Pokemon Fire Red and Pokemon Leaf Green, the Kanto remakes. I really love these games when I when I picked them up as a, as a child. I, I thought they were really good. I actually got my first ever shiny Pokemon in Fire Red, which was a shiny tense cool. Uh, I actually caught it because I thought it was a glitch. I wanted to show my friends and then later realized it was a shiny. I know there were shinies in Gen 2, but I thought it was only Gyarados that was a shiny. But uh, yeah, actually, that's why Fire Red has also got a pretty good place in my heart because of that shiny tense cool. But again, I like the games. I liked playing them just because it was just a trip back down to Kanto. So again, I hadn't played Red and Blue in eight, uh, for a while so when I played Fire and Leaf Green, so it was nice to go through all the games. I just remember playing these so much. I remember one night, actually, I was playing this game with my brother. I had Fire Red, he had Leaf Green, or was it the way around or something like that? And we were actually doing an all-nighter, trying to get as far as we could, and we was battling after every single gym, and it was really, really fun. I think we got to, like, Sabrina or something like that. We probably got further, but we just played all night non-stop, kept battling and after every single gym, and it, it was trying to get who, whoever could get the most wins, and we weren't allowed the same Pokemon as well. So the first person to catch a Pokemon, and then the second person, like, couldn't catch that they'd have to catch something else on that route it was just really fun and i really remember that memory and yeah i just really love fire red and leaf green 
coming up next we have Pokemon Gold and Pokemon Silver. Now the Johto region is one of my favorite regions and that's because of these games. When I picked up my copy of Pokemon Silver it was amazing. I love the Johto region so much and then being able to go back to Kanto, take on Red, everything like that. It was just an amazing Pokemon game and obviously they had that in because they weren't expecting to carry on the franchise after Gen 2. That's why you can go back to Kanto and fight Red and everything like that because that's where they were going to end it but obviously Gold and Silver you know, like sold so many they were like I just kind of keep it alive but unfortunately as I'm sure a lot of you guys have gone through my Pokemon Silver game doesn't work anymore because of the internal battery I think it can replace it but I just have no idea how to do that but I am a big fan of Gold and Silver and they're really good games Coming up next, we have Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Now, this didn't get very good reviews online because it was like, apparently too much water. But I actually really enjoyed these games. They were a very, very good remix in my opinion. Obviously, we hadn't had a remake since Heart Gold and Soul Silver. And I thought they were a really good remake for the 3DS. I do believe that the next remake probably will be on the Switch because why would you have, obviously, Diamond and Pearl which are playable on the 3DS. Why would you make the remakes on the 3DS as well? It just doesn't make sense. But uh, yeah, that's why I do believe that they're going to be on the Switch. But Mega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, very good games. I loved uh, the whole Latias and Latios ride feature going up and getting all the legendaries. I loved the Delta episode. The Delta episode was so good. It was a really cool thing. I like how they kind of incorporated Emerald into the game in that way. But it was a very good game. Like, they were both very good games. And yeah, I've got really good memories playing these because they're kind of old now, to be fair. But yes, that is Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Coming up next, we have Pokemon Ultra Sun and Pokemon Ultra Moon, the newest games that we've had since making this video. Now, these were good games. They were much better than Sun and Moon because, obviously, the, all the added bonuses. We obviously had the Ultra Recon Squad. We obviously had the Wormholes, everything like that, Ultimate Crossmo, all that jazz. It was really cool, and that's why it is so much better than Sun and Moon, just because of all the added effects. It's still Sun and Moon, but, like, point two, which is why it's Ultra Sun Ultra Moon, because it's just so much more stuff. Uh, again, the only problem with this game, just all the cutscenes, the dialogue, just really killed off the replayability. All you need was a skill button in these games would have been fine but they didn't put that in but i do like ultra sun ultra moon but like i say i can't really replay it because the cutscenes really put me off but they were good games they got a lot of good reviews to be fair it's just the community they didn't really like it that much but yeah that's pokemon ultra sun ultra moon Coming up next, we have Pokemon Black 2 and Pokemon White 2. Again, just the better versions of Pokemon Black and Pokemon White. I liked all the added features in these games as well. I really like them. I played Black 2 and White 2 a lot more than Black and White. Like I did say earlier, I didn't play Gen 5 loads, but I definitely played these two games more than their predecessors. And I really like the games. I, I, I'm a big fan of the storyline and stuff. Like I said, it was just a bit linear and everything like that. And, you know, I, I don't know. It's kind of like if and there. I know a lot of you guys do like Gen 5, though, which I know if I put Black and White 2 down at the bottom with Black and White, I would have got so much hate. I'm already going to get hate anyway. Because I'm pretty sure some of you guys love one of the games that I've already gone over and you want it to be higher. But this is kind of more of an opinionated list. But yeah, Black and White 2 were good games and that's why they're there on that list. Coming up next, we have Pokemon Crystal. Pokemon Crystal is an amazing game. I was one of my favorites growing up. When I played Gold and Silver, and obviously there was a third installment as Crystal, I was like, I'm gonna get that real quick, because Suicune is one of my favorite Pokemon, and having a game based around Suicune was a was kind of my dream. I'm really, really a big fan of it. Obviously, you can't get certain Pokemon in these games. I do believe like Mareep and stuff, which kind of kind of upset me a little bit, because I always like having Mareep in my games through Johto, but uh, that just, again, wasn't the case. But Crystal was a very good game. It was definitely a, a much better version of Gold and Silver. I really enjoyed it and and yeah Pokemon Crystal was a very good game I'm glad that it came to digital download on the 3DS Come up next, we have Pokemon Emerald, the third installment of Generation 3, the others obviously being Ruby and Sapphire. Now, Emerald is so high on this list because even though it's just an amazing game and I really did like all the added features, I really like the fact that they kind of up the difficulty level in these games. The gym leaders in Ruby and Sapphire were kind of difficult, but in Emerald, they definitely got stepped up a notch. Like, all the gym leaders had extra Pokemon and they were higher leveled and everything like that. Like, I remember Watson having his Manectric and his Magneton, which would always be a problem. And, you know, you obviously had Flannery and stuff with extra Pokemon. Pokemon. Everything was just really nice there. And of course, how can we forget the Battle Frontier? That was one of my favorite things about Emerald. Basically beating Hoenn, getting all the gyms, and then having to do the Battle Frontier as well. I never actually did it. I will have to go back and do that at some point. But I really enjoyed the Battle Frontier. I got a couple of the Battle Frontier like badge kind of things, but I didn't do it all. I know I didn't. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed the Battle Frontier. It was a really good game. The whole Emerald is, is just amazing. And I do wish they did put the Battle Frontier in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, but I guess they kind of put the Delta episode instead. But it was nice getting Deoxys and obviously Red Quasar in, in uh, the, the Delta episode. But still a good game though. Emerald was an amazing game. I really liked everything about it. 
Coming up next, we have Pokemon Red, Pokemon Blue, and Pokemon Green. Obviously, green only being available in Japanese. Um, but Pokemon Red and Blue, again, just so nostalgic. It's why they're so high on this list. If you guys never played Red and Blue, you probably won't be able to appreciate it as much because if you have, like, joined Pokemon, like, on the 3DS or the DS, the graphics are going to be much better than on Red and Blue. Red and Blue is, like, 2D, the music, so all everything like that, all bit rate, everything like that. But as a kid, when I picked up Pokemon for the first time, which was Pokemon Red, I was just kind of, like, lost in this world. And but for me, Pokemon Red and Blue, Blue, Generation 1 games will always be some of the best just because of the nostalgia. Whenever I play Pokemon Red and Blue, I just remember playing as a kid. And like I say, some of you guys might not be able to understand that and might think it's quite a bad game because of the graphics, which is fair enough because you never like played them when I did. But that's just how it goes. Like, you know, maybe some of you guys will play like Ultra Moon as your first game, and then like 10 years down the line, you'll have obviously much better graphics and you'll play Ultra Moon again. It'll be the first game you played, so it'll be super nostalgic for you. But that's just how I am with Red and Blue. But just, just so nostalgic, really, everything. But yeah, Red and Blue and Green, I absolutely you love. Coming up next, we have Pokemon X and Pokemon Y, the first Pokemon games for the 3DS. I was a big fan of these games because they brought Mega Evolution. Now, a lot of people were skeptical when they first did see this because obviously Pokemon evolving even further, like, whoa, what's that about? But obviously Mega Evolution, we all grew to love it a lot. And then obviously they brought Z moves and stuff in Gen 7, but I do like uh, Gen 6 for the Mega Evolution so much more than Gen 7 Z moves. I just like the fact that any Pokemon could now get in Mega Evolution if they ever do bring out more remakes, something like that, which is really cool to see because there's so many more Pokemon out there like flying on or Haxorus or anything like that that do deserve a Mega Evolution. So it's nice to see that Kalos brought that in. And also I like the fact that obviously you started with a Pokemon and then you obviously get a starter of the Kanto region as well. Like when you go back to Professor Sycamore's office, it's really cool. Like I really liked that. And then obviously you get the Mega Stone for that Pokemon as well. I really like that added thing. But yeah, X and Y were really good games. Coming up next, we have Pokemon Diamond and Pokemon Pearl. Some of the best games ever made, in my opinion. Gen 4 as a whole was just had amazing games. The, the stars were amazing, the storyline was amazing, the legendaries were amazing. Everything about Gen 4 I absolutely love. And if they get remakes on the Switch, when well, I'm pretty sure they will, it's just going to be amazing. I cannot wait to go back to the Sinnoh region on Switch as well. Like, the underground bases, everything like that. Just so many good things. Obviously, radar chaining. There's just, oh my lord, Gen 4 was just such good games. And yeah, they had to be high on this list. Coming up next though, we have Pokemon Platinum, again, still riding that Gen 4 train. Platinum was just the better version of Diamond and Pearl. Everything I've said about Diamond and Pearl is in Platinum, just better. Big fan of the Sinnoh region, like, Platinum is definitely one of my favorite games. Like, Gen 2 and Gen 4 are my favorite region, like, games, and obviously, uh, the fact that Platinum is in Gen 4 is a, is a reason for that. It's just such a good game, and I'm a big fan of it, but yeah, that's just Platinum. I can't really say much more about it because I just talked about it in Diamond and Pearl. Finishing things off though, as the best Pokemon games, in my opinion, as of now, is Pokemon Heart Gold and Pokemon Soul Silver. So many amazing things on these remakes. Pokemon following you was a big thing for me. I loved the fact that you could turn around and you just had your Pokemon there. Really awesome. I don't know why they took it out and didn't bring it back in Gen 6 or anything like that, or Gen 5. Really annoying, but you know, the fact that they had this in, you know, the Soul Silver and Heart Gold games, amazing thing for me. I love Johto anyway, going back to Kanto. Again, everything I said about Gold and Silver is in these games is just better. Big fan of these games, and Soul Silver is my favorite Pokemon game of all time. So I don't know if Gen 8 is going to be good. By the t like at the time I'm making this, Gen 8 hasn't been announced or anything like that. So who knows? Maybe Gen 8 will knock Soul Silver off the list. But as of now, Soul Silver is my favorite Pokemon game of all time. But with that, it does wrap up today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did making it. And I do apologize if I did offend any of you by having a game that you really enjoy on the bottom of the list. This is just all opinionated based. Let me know what yours are in your in the comment section. Hey, put Soul Silver at the bottom. You know what? It will be a treat for me. I do have a couple of other videos coming onto your screen in a second, like more ranking videos, stuff like that. But yeah, that is everything from me though, guys. So if you did enjoy, please do hit subscribe button down below for more daily Pokemon content. But thanks for watching, guys. Have an amazing day. And until next time, peace.